Hello everyone. Okay, um, I've had a few people recently asking me about the batteries for some of the Russian Geiger counters which are becoming quite readily available on different auction sites, um, on Etsy, things like that there. And um, the DP5A, the DP5B, the DP5V, um, other older versions of all of these units and a, a couple of the uh, the younger ones as well uh, use a strange size of battery now these are reproductions I got the file online and I printed these bits of paper out and then I stuck them onto new batteries now these batteries come in a pack containing three batteries and they're known as an LR12 and that's the batteries the right way up so to power the DP5A which I have here and the DP5V you need three 1.5 volt batteries and these three batteries come if you want to get exactly the right size and sort of have it looking reasonably authentic uh, you need what's called an LR12 battery and it's a 4.5 volt battery. There's three 1.5 volt cells in there and it comes in this plastic case which you have to cut off to get these three batteries out. Now I power this meter with uh, just standard AA batteries. So this is a DP5A and I literally power that with standard AA batteries which I have made adapters for. DP5V, I've done the same thing. I have made uh, a couple of 1.5 volt AA battery adapters and then I can just drop the uh, AA batteries into it. And then I've also put a slightly larger battery in because I have upgraded the bulbs in this to be slightly brighter, which I will show you in a minute. So what, I'll, what we'll do in this video is we'll show the batteries in the DP5V. Um, you don't really need to see the DP5A because the battery compartments are fairly similar. I'll show you it in the DP5V and then we will cut this open on camera and I will show you then how to extract the uh, three cells out of it. So we'll do a quick jump cut and uh, we'll open up the battery compartment in this bad boy here. Okay, opening the battery compartment on the DP5V is pretty simple. Uh, you just unscrew this captive screw here and then lift off the back. And as you see, I have made three AA battery adapters which are the same size as the LR12 cells. So, fairly, fairly straight, fairly straightforward here. You can see there is the AA battery inside and I can just remove them. And they are simply made out of some very thin cardboard. And then I have wrapped it in electrical tape and then for a conductor at the bottom for your negative battery terminal, I've just put some tin foil. And I've just formed that into just a little sort of coin size and that just fills the space between the length of the battery and the bottom. And you can see there if I put those side by side, you can just see the way I've just had enough just to fill the space. And that is more than adequate. And then uh, those go in. So if you're using the original batteries, you can just make three of these and just put another 1.5 volt in there. But what I have done is I've put in slightly brighter bulbs. Uh, one of my bulbs had actually blown and I couldn't get the original Russian bulbs, uh, which are, from memory, I think they're 1.1 volt or 1.1 watts, sorry. So uh, if I was to put in larger bulbs, uh, a 1.5 volt battery simply wouldn't uh, light the bulb up. It just it just wouldn't light up at all. Or you get a very, very, very small glow on the filament. So what I did was I put in two uh, 1.5 volt bulbs, newer style ones, little screw ones. Um, and little, I think they're called doll's house bulbs or something out there. And then I put in a, a rechargeable Ultrafire 3.7 volt battery. And that provides more than enough power then to light the terminal. But you can probably see here now, if I remember rightly, the positive end. So you can see there, the positive end is the flat and the negative end is the one with the indentation on it. So you can see here that those 
batteries then fit perfectly into the space and they look the part too. They look much better than uh, just you know, bare batteries, obviously these are, but if you want to have them on display, sitting beside it or whatever, those look quite nice. And if anybody wants the file, if you're watching this and wants the file, I can point you in the direction of getting that file. So we'll put that back in. Oh, and there's my, my tin foil popping out the back. So put that in. It's making a good connection. Make sure I have this round the right way. That's the way it goes there. You can see that on the back, it's actually divided off. So there's where the two batteries would go to power the unit. And then we have a battery then off on its own. And that's just for doing the bulbs. So all that all that battery pack does is, uh, is run the bulbs. And then we just find the hole, screw that in. You don't need it too tight, that'll do the job there. And then just fold that over, that pops back on. And then if I flip that over, you can see then that the bulbs are a good bit brighter and they also uh, illuminate the fluorescent display as well. If you leave it on for a while, the fluorescent display will actually get a little bit of illumination on it. So yes, right. We will go to opening up the LR12 battery pack so you can see what it looks like when you open it up. So another quick jump cut. Okay, so you're gonna need a couple of tools for this. Uh, the plastic is reasonably uh, easy to get into. Uh, you just have to be careful. As you can see there, I haven't even, I'd literally just taken that out of the box and I just pushed that with my finger and I'm able to take off the top. There is no glue, there is just a little clip and if you get that corner, just get your fingernail underneath it, or if you want to use a screwdriver, just lift off the cover. Now, these two terminals at the top, this will be a lantern battery. Uh, some old torches use these batteries. Now, as I said, it's called an LR12, 4.5 volt. You'll get one of these for about 4 99 on Amazon. Um, probably cheaper than that on eBay. Shop around, uh, they're all decent. There's loads and loads of different brands of this. Uh, I had Energizer before, so I just went for the same make again. So when you're taking off the top, just make sure you bend these up straight and then the top has little cutouts in it and then those just lift off. Now you'll see the way the batteries are all separated off. Now one of these batteries has, I think it's this one here, the outer part of the battery is actually conductive. So you have to be quite careful. So you can see they're all soldered together. And then we'll have a set of batteries, which, so there you go. There's the batteries there in the pack and they're all separated off. So I just have to be quite careful here. Um, I'm not gonna take them out the full way, but all you have to do is snip off each one of these connectors where they're all connected together. So you can see this one here is soldered at the side. This one is soldered at the top and this one is soldered at the top. So to separate them out, all we do is just snip the conductor running across each one. And then you can just take that battery out, wrap it in some electrical tape if you want to just have them like that there, or as I would probably do it, wrap them in electrical tape and then put the stickers on just to have them uh, looking a little bit more authentic. But it, it's a very, very quick process and it won't take you more than five minutes to do. And just for safety, just so I don't get any arcing, I will put that top back on, making sure I got it around the right way. And then I'll just bend those contacts down and I'll just keep that safe until I need to use this battery because I very, very rarely put these uh, these three batteries in the meter and there's plenty of charge left in them. Just remember to check the polarity of the battery. Uh, it is very important you do that uh, because that would look like the negative end and that would look like the positive end. It is actually the other way around. That is the positive end, that is the negative end. If you're in doubt, 
check it with a little digital multimeter. I would, I mean, anybody who's doing electronics like this, I would advise you to have one. Uh, it is just good practice to have a digital multimeter if you're working with electronics like this, so you're not destroying anything which may be susceptible, especially those little bulbs, those little Russian bulbs. Uh, you could easily blow one of them. They are absolutely tiny. Uh, to get into, if you want to do the same job, if you take the uh, the back off here, depending on what way your DP5 is, you may have wax over the screws. Uh, if you do, just pick the wax out, and then you just take off the four screws, and the whole body then, whole top, comes out, and uh, you can then access, this whole top comes off, and then you've got all the circuitry inside, and the two bulbs are just sitting in here, and uh, you can unscrew them and then replace them with slightly brighter ones if you want to, like I did. But listen folks, hopefully that has helped a few people. Uh, it is not a hard job to do. Uh, making these, the hardest part of it is printing them out, getting them in the right scale. Uh, it may be trial and error, you just have to get... Um, I find that if you measured the battery, so measure the battery top to bottom, and try to get it a reasonable, you know, so do top to bottom and then you, it might be trial and error to get how long they are. Uh, print them slightly longer so you can get a nice overlap. Uh, if you if you know acrylic writing, you can write the expiry date in there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, they do look nicer when you get them like that. You can actually buy, I think somebody on eBay is actually selling reproductions like this. Uh, for way more than it would cost to buy one of these and then to print them out. So don't be doing that. Don't be buying original ones either because you don't know if they're going to have charge or not. And really, why should you be spending 20 or $30 or pounds to get those imported from Ukraine when you can just make your own, which look just as good. But listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.